All right, it's time now for a very, very special interview. Joining us on the show now is former Australian captain and hands down one of the finest batsmen to have ever played the game of cricket, Michael Clark. He's here in India and joins us live on the show. Michael, first up, welcome to India. It's great having you here on NDTV. A very special place this for you, isn't it, Michael? India, you made your test debut here Thank back you, in 2004. Sure nice to be here. And you, you scored a century on debut as well. And that to a big one from what I remember, 151. It was batting at number six in your debut test match. But tell us about your current trip to India. What brings you to India this time around? Yeah, that was a long time ago, that 151. But yeah, look, I think India's always had a special place in my heart. It's probably like my second home now. I spend so much time here um, working with some business opportunities and then also some commentary. So it's always nice to be back here. I'm back here this time for Tourism Australia. Um, I guess not, very, not a very hard job promoting the country that I've grown up in. I, I love Australia. I'm very proud to be from Australia. And um, there's not too many things I believe we don't have in our country. So... You know, my goal is to try and get as many um, uh, Indian people as possible to come and visit Australia and the same in return, Australians to come to India. I think we're very lucky to have two beautiful countries. I think our cultures have a lot of similarities. We both have a love and passion for cricket and for sport. And um, like I say, I, I want all Indian people to know that they are very welcome to, to come to our beautiful country, Australia. It's great having you here in India, Michael. Now, before we talk about all the heavy-duty stuff, of course, in Australia, scheduled to tour India for a limited over series in September, October. But before we get into all of that, wanted to ask you, every time you see the Aussie team playing these days, do you sometimes perhaps get the urge to maybe throw on a jersey and get onto the field yourself? It's not been very long, after all, since you made your retirement. <laughs> No, probably the opposite, to be honest. I think when I watch the Australian players play, I think, thank God I'm not out there in the heat. Uh, I don't have to do warm-ups. I don't have to do recoveries. I don't have to go to team meetings. I don't have to get a duck. Um, so, yeah, look, I think, you know, uh, I started my own cricket academy about four years ago in Australia, and that gives me the opportunity to still stay involved with cricket to help young boys and girls out. And then also the commentary keeps me close enough as well. So, yeah, I feel like I, I, I certainly retired at the right time uh, for the right reasons. And now I can sit back and, and still watch and enjoy um, the greatest game in the world. I just don't have to be out there playing. So, no, I don't miss playing at all. We've, of course, enjoyed your stint in the commentary box as well, Michael. We'll talk about that in just a bit. But before that, let's talk about on-field cricket. Who do you think will have the edge when India hosts Australia later this year? I think India in their own backyard are going to be very tough to beat. Um, they're full of confidence. They obviously just beat Sri Lanka 3-0 as well and played some wonderful cricket. Uh, I think the, this Indian team is full of confidence and they've got a lot of talent. So I think it's going to be a tough tour for Australia, but, you know, a good one. I, I think especially in one-day cricket, um, obviously we won the last World Cup in 2015. This is a great challenge for this Australian team. Um, the Australian cricket team's rankings in both test cricket and one-day cricket are... Um, unfortunately are on the way down. So they need to turn things around. They need to go to Bangladesh and win that series to, uh, to get some confidence in the test format before the Ashes. They need to come to here in the one-day format and try and beat India because, you know, I think it's the Australian public expect their cricket team to be, you know, the number one team in the world. And that's the challenge that this current team faces right now. And, you know, I think of Virat Kohli, he's, he's doing exactly the same with this Indian team. He wants to be the best team in the world. And at the moment, they're playing really well. Absolutely. I want to talk to you about Virat Kohli as well in much more detail in just a bit. But before that, I'm glad you mentioned the Bangladesh tour uh, of Australia because, you know, there was for some time a big question mark over that. And talking about Aussie cricket, of course, the one thing that made headlines all over the world recently was the rather ugly pay dispute or the revenue sharing dispute in Australian cricket. It's over now and that's really good news for both Australian and world cricket. But in, mm. when it was going on, Michael, what was going through your mind? Because what happened really wasn't very good for the game, was it? Yeah, look, I think what's most important is it's over now. I think it's great that both parties have obviously compromised to a certain extent. Um, and now we can focus on what's important, and that's the cricket. The players can get back to doing what they do best in playing cricket, and the administrators can get back to what they do best and administrate. Um, I think it's, yeah, it's good for the game that that's been sorted out. There's, there's no doubt about it. I think it's really important 
that this Australian team does go to Bangladesh, does come to India, mm. and then obviously we've got a huge summer back in Australia with the Ashes. So uh, they can't afford to miss any cricket, this current Australian team. They need to be playing, they need to be performing well. Right, I also read somewhere, Michael, that you perhaps said that uh, Steve Smith in this entire pay dispute perhaps could have been more vocal, perhaps he could have been more proactive. We won't talk about that right now, but we will talk about Steve Smith as someone who was the captain before Smith took over uh, as captain of Australian cricket. How do you rate him as skipper? Yeah, look, well, I, I, my comments about Steve Smith having more of a say when that dispute was going on, that wasn't the case at all. I think Steve Smith handled himself really well. I think the problem with uh, what was going on was some people were talking about it on social media in regards to players and some people weren't. And I think uh, that needed to be sorted out between the Players Association and the players. I actually think personally Steve Smith kept himself out of it. Um, uh, I don't know, but I would imagine he was talking to people behind closed doors. So I think he handled himself really well. As he has done with the captaincy so far, I think his batting continues to lead the way for Australia. He, he's certainly Australia's best batsman um, and one of the best batsmen in the world at the moment. Uh, and he's going to need to continue to perform well if Australia is going to, like I say, find a way to get back to number one in the world. So, um, yeah, a big 12 months coming up for the Aussies and I'm, I'm confident Steve Smith will continue to lead the way. All right, from Australian cricket, Michael, let's switch tracks and let's talk about Indian cricket for a bit now. The number one test team in the world, they've won eight consecutive test series now. As someone who had an 11-year career at the highest level, what's your take on the kind of cricket, the brand of cricket the team in there is playing currently? Yeah, I like the way they're playing. I think they're, they're quite aggressive. Um, they're willing to risk losing to win. Uh, and I think that's important. I think sport is about one team winning, one team losing. You want to win, but you learn to lose as well. You accept that losing is a part of sport. And I feel India is playing that brand of cricket at the moment. They're not hesitating. They're confident in their ability and they're trying to win. So, uh, like I say, for the Aussies to come over here in this one day series and to beat India would be a wonderful achievement. But like you say, India is full of confidence. They're winning at the moment, both home and away. And the next 12 months is pretty big for the Indian cricket team. I know they've got a way tour to South Africa, a way tour to England, and then an away tour next summer to Australia. If India can beat those three teams away from their own backyard, there's no doubt they are the number one team in the world. All right, let's talk about the Indian captain now, Virat Kohli. You briefly mentioned him a, a short while back. Now, the Aussie media, I have to be very honest here, Michael, never really misses a chance to have a go at Virat Kohli. But you recently went on record to say that Virat does have fans in <laughs> Australia. It's not like he doesn't have any fans or any fan following in, in, uh, down under. And that you also think that he has a lot of Australian spirit in him. Is he one of the toughest characters you've run into <coughs> on a cricket field? Yeah. Uh, yeah, look, I think, like I say, that's why I believe a, a lot of the, the things Virat does when he plays uh, is similar to the Australian style of cricket. Uh, Virat shouldn't feel bad if the media don't like him. I know that exact feeling. The Australian media didn't like me much either, and I was captain of their team. So um, that's part and parcel of, of playing sport at the highest level. Um, I think sometimes when you do cop some criticism, you should take that as a compliment. You know, it's a sign that... Um, you know, people know how good a player you are and, and Virat is a, is a wonderful player. There's no doubt about that. Mm. Uh, again, I think his style is suiting his current Indian team. He's aggressive. He wants to win. He doesn't take a backward step. And, you know, that's exactly how we got brought up to play as Australian cricketers. And that's why I believe Virat has Australian in him. I think he plays a brand of cricket that, that I've been brought up to play. Um, a big part of why the teams I play with had so much success is because we had that fight and we wouldn't take a backward step either. But I know Virat quite well. He's a gentleman. He's a nice guy off the field as well. And that's probably why I have so much respect for him. Right, that's a very pertinent point that you make there, Michael. Lots of similarities, really, when you scratch the surface between the Aussies and the Indians about the way they go about their cricket. And we'll talk about that also. But sticking to Virat for now, when you see Virat mm. captaining his team on the field, what do you see? Well, I see a team that's winning at the moment. At the end of the day, that's all that matters. It's uh, our, our sport is result-driven. Mm. So... As a leader, it's exactly the, same. it's exactly the same. If your team's winning, then you're obviously doing some things right. And at the moment, as you mentioned, India have won eight series in a row, so they're doing plenty of things right. 
Right. When it comes to Team India these days, Michael, they're not really afraid to give it back to the opposition on the field. They play good and when required, tough cricket. From an Aussie point of view, was there an element of surprise perhaps perhaps in Australia and in, in Aussie cricket circles when you saw Team India play this brand of cricket which began maybe a, you know, five, six years back? I actually think it began earlier than that, to be honest. I think Surav Ganguly deserves a lot of credit for that. Mm. I think the way... Uh, he changed the style of cricket that India was playing. He brought that aggressive approach to the Indian cricket team. And I, I think his captaincy deserves a lot of credit for that. And uh, I think, you know, um, Anil Kumble, MS Dhoni, Virat Kohli, they've continued that on. So, um, no, I, I haven't been surprised at all. I think, you know, that confidence in, in yourself and in your team um, brings that out in you. And, you know, the want to have success, the want to win is is what drives you every single day on the field. I think mm. what's most important is you can play hard on the field, but also be respectful and, and build friendships off the field. And, um, you know, from my experiences playing against India, it's been exactly that. It's been competitive, Australia versus India on the field, but I've always had wonderful friendships off the field with the Indian players. Well, you're absolutely right, Michael. You know, Saurav Ganguly, of course, instilled that, that fighting spirit, uh, that aggression in Indian cricket. At that time, you would see maybe five, mm. six players do it. Now you see the whole team go out there and play very, very uh, good and, when required, tough cricket. Uh, going back to Virat for a while now, uh, Michael, uh, Michael Hussey has gone on record comparing Virat to Ricky Ponting as captain. Would you agree with that comparison? Well, I've never played under Virat, so it's hard for me to compare their captaincy styles. Uh, I think two very different teams. I don't think you can compare the team that Ricky Ponting captained to the team that Virat's, Virat's captaining. So, uh, and I think Virat's his own man as well. I don't think Virat would want to be compared to anybody. I think he has his own style. Uh, he backs the way that he plays. And uh, like I say, what's important right now is he's leading the Indian team really well. The team's right. winning. They're having success. And he knows how, how tough the next 12 months is for cricket. So he'll be wanting to, to be number one in the world in all three formats of the game. I'm sure that's what he's challenging his team towards at the moment.